Hello, Leos. When looking to your situation today, what your person is thinking, feeling, wanting, just whatever the story is that comes out. Um, just general energy check-in. What's going on with you over the next couple weeks or so. Remember, the Lion's Gate is on Saturday the 8th, so that's a really potent time. If you do spell work, rituals, um, prayers, affirmations, visualizations, see the Empress cards at the bottom here, so that's a very kind of a confirmation card, I would say. <laughs> Um, just powerful energy, just uh, just a potent time to manifest what you want in your life, basically. So, anyway, that's Saturday. Look up the Lion's Gate if you're not already familiar with it. So, what is the story? What is going on with your love life? Please give me clear and direct messages. Don't be too complicated. Be forward. Not tonight, cards. <laughs> death, three of wands. And death is just an ending of something, so that's not a bad thing. Three of wands. Four of swords reversed. The hangman. The nine of cups. The eight of wands. The five of cups. The five of wands. Yeah. Miscommunication with someone is what I'm getting. I'm going to pull some more cards after this too, see what else I can get on the connection. But uh, basically miscommunication is, is what came through pretty strong for this reading. I feel like... What's wrong with my fucking camera? Stop doing that. I feel like you or your person are kind of torn on whether or not to let this connection go. It's like this... sorry sorry <laughs> i think you or your person are kind of torn on to whether or not let this connection go uh is with the death card here i don't mean for sure that it's over but it's almost like i feel like one or both of you are aware that the way things have been or the way things were that has to be over that cycle has to be over like you can't whatever was going on with you two or whatever is going on with you two it's like you're just aware that that can't continue anymore so whether there's like ghosting or there's just miscommunication or arguments just not being on the same page not seeing eye to eye whatever the situation might be it's like you guys are just kind of aware that you can't do that anymore like that needs to be over and so i think one or both of you is kind of like do i want to throw the whole relationship away or do i want to try and just you know have that cycle be over but have this relationship work and it's kind of back and forth energy. It's like somebody keeps going back and forth between fighting for this connection and letting it go. It's the three of wands here. It's like, it looks like she's got like a power cord in one hand and a skull in the other. So it's like, is this connection dead and over? Or do I want to like try to bring life back into this connection? You know, it's kind of just this chaotic energy. Um, and this could be, again, this could be you or your partner or both of you. It's just however the energy plays out, you know what your story is. The Four of Swords here. So upright, this would be isolation, healing, rest, recovery. I would take it, upright, I would take it as someone letting something go. It's like they're kind of just isolating and healing and detaching. But since it's reversed, it's like somebody's like, no, I don't want to isolate. I don't want to give up. I don't want to detach. I do want to try to figure out a way to make this work. But it's really back and forth energy because you have that energy. And then right next to it, you have the hangman. Could be a new perspective, but I also mostly see the hangman is just, it's letting go. It's not taking action. It's, um, it's just kind of this time of like pause and like reflection, just not taking any action basically. So I kind of take it as like back and forth energy, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like here you have someone taking action. They're like not, I mean, they're not willing. I see since it's reversed, it's like they're not willing to isolate. They're not willing to detach, you know, they're trying to, to figure this out and they're trying to fight for this. Like you see how powerful this person is. They're like. They're trying to make this decision whether or not to, to fight for this, to bring this relationship back to life or this connection. Um, they're trying to figure out what, what the other person feels, what's going on, if this is going somewhere long term. Uh, with the hangman, though, 
I mean, I do see it as back and forth energy, like just not sure whether to let go or to try harder. It's like somebody is just at this crossroads where they're like, is it, is it worth it to let go or is it, is, you know, uh, I kind of see it as possibly your person letting go to some extent, but holding space for you. Like they're not completely detaching and isolating, but they're tired of trying to control the situation. They're tired of trying to figure everything out. They're tired of, you know, the last reading I got, it was like somebody who's just tired of like not being listened to somebody who's feeling like they're just not understood. Um, someone wanting the relationship to be worked on, but feeling like it just like what like there's just miscommunication and like this detachment and it's like you guys are just not seeing eye to eye and so it's almost like somebody is holding space for somebody else like they're having hope but they're trying not to control the situation anymore they're trying to just let whatever is meant to be be um just letting things flow basically I feel like this energy is going to make somebody chase somebody else. Like, you see the Nine of Cups, you see how she's looking for it, and there's this frog here. It's like, this frog comes back around and tries to drag her back, you know, and tries to get her back. It's like, she's just kind of, like, seductive. She's just kind of doing her own thing. Um, it's like an apology coming in, possibly, or just somebody just realizing somebody is detached and that they're not trying as hard, and so it's like somebody else is going to try to pull them back in and, and get them to try again, basically, and, and try to convince them to save this connection. And it's just really back and forth energy, though, because then you have the Eight of Wands, and it's like this, this passion, this honeymoon phase again, this renewed energy, and then it's back to the Five of Cups and the Five of Wands. So, see the mermaid in the Five of Cups, she's watching her, this ship sail away. It also almost seems like a power struggle with this person. Like, when they don't get their way, they just kind of, like, detach or leave. Or they try to pull you back in. And it's like, this mermaid isn't chasing this ship. She's just like, this sucks, this is painful, but I'm going to let this go, you know? Um, it's just very back and forth energy. It's like this kind of... I don't want to say like a codependent relationship. I don't think, I don't know if codependent's the right word. It's just like a very, it's just very like back and forth, kind of like a hot and cold relationship. It's like, it's just hard to, it's hard for you guys to find a balance in this connection. Five of Wands. You know, see, it's like two people not talking. Like they want to talk, they want to communicate, but it's like there's arguments or they just misunderstand each other. Or there's just certain things that they can't compromise on, just disagreements, just this energy of, like, just miscommunication, just detachment, just not quite understanding each other, not quite being on the same page. Uh, and it's like, you know, you see this man is, like, not seeing her pain. He's kind of just ignoring it. Um, yeah. Let me see what I can get on saving this connection. Let me see if there's anything on that cards do I want to pull? I'll pull from another deck, I think. <clears throat> Not that one. Okay, so we get there's miscommunication, there's just... <sighs> I'm really drawn to this ruin. Oh, let me see what that one is. Okay, I had to look it up because I'm not familiar with all the ruins. So I got this one. And, okay, so it says two horses travel. While one horse frequently symbolizes the warrior, two horses, as are used to pull carts, symbolize travel and progress. The ruin it was it represents journeys, distant places, and events which have not yet transpired. In Ruin lore, it's also regarded as being a depiction of Slivnar, the Norse god Odin's eight-legged horse, which symbolizes fluidity and smoothness of motion. It encompasses energy, force, direct motion. Uh, like any horse, this progress must be carefully managed and tended in order for its full potential to be realized. So I guess that makes sense. It's kind of like 
slow and steady wins the race with this connection almost. It's like you have to... It's too hot and cold. You guys need to find more of a balance, I think. Um, so more information on this. So it's forward energy, forward movement. It may represent general travel and steady progress, or it might literally represent a car, plane, or another method of transportation. It also symbolizes communication over long distances, and it can refer to an important message that you'll give or receive. Harmonious concord and pulling together as a team is also referenced here. It, when it appears in a spread, it empowers the ruins around it and augments their meaning simply by virtue of its directional energy and forward movement. Teamwork, forward motion. So basically the key words for this ruin, travel, teamwork, forward motion, uh, communication, consistency, consistent drive, will win the day basically is what it's saying. So that does make a lot of sense actually with this reading could be that you guys need to go to a new location it could be for some of you if there's like this stagnant energy like somebody's just been locked up or in this new location for too long could be people like somebody being stressed with quarantine too it's like they need to just go out and do something it's like even if you i mean i know that we need to keep quarantining so it's not i'm not saying to break quarantine but like maybe go out to the woods or like go do something fun together where you can still socially distance. It's like somebody it could be like the energy of somebody being cooped up, cooped up or just like bored, stagnant energy, just kind of bored with their life. It's like they need maybe stressed with work. Somebody who just needs something new. They need like a new, fresh energy to get things moving again. And I think it's kind of same with a relationship or this connection too. I don't want to say take things slower. I don't know if that's accurate, but you need to... It just seems like so, it just it seems like there's like a lack of balance here. Like there's this miscommunication and it's like just so back and forth and you guys really need to work on finding a middle ground. So let me see what the cards have to say about it. So what can be done to save this relationship? What can, what can save this connection? What do we need to know? Like what is, like what is the key to getting on the pay, on the right page with this person and moving forward? Focus, movement, Oop, hello, strength, self-worth, high, high priestess of earth, message, lust, okay, Oop, hello. So focusing on the deeper underlying energy, I mean, I feel like on a deeper, more spiritual level, you guys are on the same page with wanting this relationship to go forward. It's just, it's like at the core, you guys connect, you have this, this connection, but it's like the day to day is where you guys are going wrong. Just like the communication the, or the lack of communication or the what arguments or whatever it is, there's just this energy of like, just this energy of not communicating clearly with each other. Um, so I think focus on finding common ground. Focus on the focus. And then a horse. You might have horses as a spirit animal because the horses keep popping up. It popped up with that ruin too. So look into the horse spirit animal. That might have a message for you too, especially if you're like seeing them in your dreams or you run into them or whatever. Just look look into the horse that might be an animal that's just spiritually around you um a, a guide for you basically in the astral realm anyway so with focus and movement it's like focusing on you know you you have this deeper you both have this deeper underlying desire to move forward together so kind of focusing on that focusing on the deeper energy but also working on the day-to-day -day communication basically f trying to find common ground trying to make compromises, um, catching yourself when you snap or they snap, maybe look into, maybe even communication classes would be good for you guys. I think there's a need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with this person, like you might need to, maybe one or both of you needs to set boundaries. Um, you really need to make compromises. I think that's the issue is that there is a lot that's unsaid, like there's certain things that trigger you and certain things that trigger them. And I feel like they just kind of explode into arguments or maybe somebody like kind of ghosts a little bit or detaches when they don't like what you're doing or you do that to them. 
Um, and so it's kind of just like going in circles. So it's like you guys need to have an honest heart to heart talk about just what your boundaries are, what you want in this relationship, um, what kind of compromises you can make, how you two can communicate better. You know, I just, I sense this need for honesty and for clarity in this connection because you guys are going back and forth right now. So you need to step back from that energy and go about this a different way. I think the, the strength and self-confidence card or self-worth card here, it's kind of talking about, you know, the boundaries that you guys need to set with each other and the compromises. It's just kind of reiterating what we got from the focus and the movement card. It's just being strong and knowing your self-worth and figuring out what you will and what you will not tolerate and, and telling that to this person, but you just want to tell it. There's just certain things you do that trigger them and vice versa. And so you want to tell, you want to set your boundaries, but you want to do it in a way that doesn't feel controlling, doesn't feel harsh. You want to set those boundaries in a way that's like, you know, I feel like this when this happens. Do you think we could work on this? Do you think, you know, can we make this compromise? Can we, like, how do we find a common ground? So it's like being assertive and strong and setting those boundaries, but also being kind of gentle and vulnerable and open at the same time so that your person doesn't just feel attacked and shut down, you know? Because when you're communicating with somebody, if they feel like you're attacking them and you're telling them they're doing this wrong or they're doing that wrong and whatever, they're not going to hear anything you're saying you're just going to be like a broken record to them. It's just going to go in one ear out the other because they're going to feel attacked. And so they're not going to really listen to the energy behind your words. So you need to work on kind of communicating that energy behind your words, basically like the feeling, what is the underlying energy? What is the underlying desire here? What is the underlying common ground that you guys are trying to find to make this relationship work? You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Get to, get to the root of it. Really do some deep, introspective thinking. Um, get to the root of it. Like, get to the root of why you feel the way you feel, why they feel the way they feel, what you guys can do to kind of just meet in the middle. But there is this need for honesty. There is this need to, to stop with the power struggle, to let go of ego on both sides so that you guys can actually openly communicate. Because it's kind of like you're, you're, there's love there. There is mutual love there. Um but like the pride kind of blocks it so it's like when you guys communicate it's like i feel like i just feel like you try to word what you want in a way that comes off as harsh to them or controlling to them and so they just don't hear you and they just get defensive and then it starts this like vicious cycle and it's like you feel like you're communicating your feelings and they're just not giving a shit and then you know they feel like they're being attacked for just out of nowhere um, and then you guys just go in circles or it could be vice versa. It could be the other way around. It could be them feeling that and you, you know, you feel attacked. Um, it's just, it's just this energy of miscommunication. So I think a willingness to be vulnerable, a willingness to, to develop better communication skills with each other, a willingness to let go of control issues and pride on both sides, um, to have these deep heart to heart talks and really just get to the root of the issues and be honest about what you feel, what you want, and communicate in a way that's really important to communicate in a way where the other person doesn't feel attacked. Because you you need to think about this. You need to think about the way you guys are communicating and how somebody is just feeling attacked. They're not feeling heard. They're not feeling understood. And so you're going in circles. So you got to step off that merry-go-round and be introspective get to the root of the problem and then come back to it from a like a new fresh perspective like going about things a much different way to find that common ground you know this is like high priestess of earth that could be an earth sign but it could also just be about you know grounding again this is common ground grounding uh stability not going back and forth between hot and cold honeymoon phase or we're not talking for a week you know what i mean it's like finding that that middle ground is really important for you guys and message, I feel like there could be a message coming through about travel where either you might be sending this message or they might be sending this message. Um, with the lust energy, I actually get a good energy from that. I actually feel like, I feel like if the romance is getting dull, like, and this could be through arguments or it could just be like, for those of you that are like, like detached and you haven't talked for a while or those of you 
um, in a relationship, it's like you need to bring back that like. I mean, they want to bring back like the passion and love, but like in a healthier way, not in a way that's like you guys go back and forth between arguing and miscommunicating and like not talking or like just the honeymoon phase and then you know, it's hot and cold. Just not that, not that hot and cold energy, not that confusing, you know, miscommunicative energy, but more of a passionate energy and like a sense of traveling or doing something new together, like going someplace new having that fresh perspective I think lust um I get the sense that there could be something lot like kind of probably too much info but this is what's coming through that there could be something lacking when it comes to the sex life <laughs> that somebody one or both people is not happy about or there could just be something I don't want to say maybe not something lacking but just that they want to try new things or they want to do new things that they want that like sexuality and that passion back that romance basically so I just feel like it's been like all work and no play and they want it to be play again sometimes too they want to have fun they want to go out I feel like a vacation would be really good for you guys so that's just the energy I'm getting from this reading um if this resonates you can book a private reading with me too my contact info is below and thank you guys for watching oh and subscribe if this resonates too thank you